All right, in the previous video I did, I talked about Anthony Joshua and him needing to throw combinations. And I said I was going to talk about why I even said that. And that's what I'm going to do here right now. And there's something that's very clear when it comes to Anthony Joshua that I have been figured out. I've been seeing it for a long time. But to save a lot of explanation and stuff like that, I'm going to advise you to do one thing. I want you to get on YouTube as you are right now, I want you to get on YouTube and I want you to go watch Anthony Joshua's knockout highlight reel. Matter of fact, go watch somebody else's knockout highlight reel before you watch AJ's. Go watch Wilder's or something like that. Go watch Wilder's knockout highlight reel and then go watch Anthony Joshua. And then you're going to see why I said that. Because in case people haven't figured it out, as athletic as Anthony Joshua may be, as big as he may be, you know, uh, with the size and the reach and everything. It's very clear that Anthony Joshua, even for the size he is, even at 6'6", 200 and some, some pounds, he has no power. That's why I wanted you guys to go watch his highlight knockout reel. You're going to see that really he's never really had a chance to floor a dude. Not really. You notice a lot of his knockouts come from him throwing consecutive punches and the ref steps in and waves off the fight. He's never truly nailed somebody to the canvas. That's one thing you're going to notice while looking at his highlight reel. He's never really nailed nobody to the canvas. Long story short, Anthony Joshua does not have no one-stop shop power. He doesn't, which is crazy to be that big and to be that athletic and you can't crack. And the reason why I say this is because it's not like Anthony Joshua can't land. We didn't seen Anthony Joshua detonate on uh, Andy Ruiz. I mean, he cracked him hard. He didn't move him. He didn't knock him out. He didn't even stumble him. But you say, oh, Andy Ruiz got a good chin. I know he got a good chin, but still, this is the heavyweight division. He got all that size and supposedly all that strength, and he's punching down. And he cracked on him like that and wasn't able to put him out. Look at um, Jermaine Franklin. It wasn't like he didn't land on Franklin. He detonated on Franklin a few times. Didn't hurt him. Didn't hurt him at all. You know, didn't deter him, didn't get him to back up, didn't get him to res respect him enough to the point he put him on the back foot. It didn't happen. AJ, as big as he is, don't got no power. Now, what you're going to see is his knockouts, all his genuine knockouts come from consecutive punches, combination punching. Okay? Combination punching. That's how he got Dylan White out of there. That wasn't no one-stop shop, one hit like Deontay Wilder hit Dominique Brazil. Anthony Joshua don't got that. He needs an accumulation of punches to take guys out. Look at Klitschko. How did he get that victory that now got win over Klitschko? It was a combination of punches. It wasn't what he's doing now. The reason why I say this is because Anthony Joshua thinks he's a boxer. And he's not. And since, you know, he's working with Derrick James in that style, they're not combination punchers. And since his most success in all his knockouts come from him throwing uh, punches and stuff like that, combinations, I don't see how him doing this jab, jab, then detonate, boom. You don't have the power for that. To where it can't be respected and they respect what you're doing in that ring. He does it. So Anthony Joshua needs to throw combination punches because he doesn't have enough power, like you would say, like you would see in a Wilder, to be able to crack somebody and get their ass out of there. I just see AJ crack a lot of dudes. They're not phased. And when they are phased by what Anthony Joshua is doing, it's because Anthony Joshua is throwing in combination. 
Go look at all his knockouts. It takes combinations for AJ to get it done. And I say that because that jab in that right hand had no follow-up. I mean, would it really kill Anthony Joshua to come back with a left hook right after that right hand? It wouldn't kill him. But he doesn't do it. The point is, if you're not trying to be that guy that throws those combination punches, this, this, and that, all your fight's going to look like Uzik. It's going to look like Andy Ruiz. going to look like Jermaine Franklin. All your fights is going to do that. AJ has to let his hands go. That's why I said he needs combination punching. Because Anthony Joshua don't got the power. Which is crazy because you have Fury, somebody who came from being pillow fisted to knocking dudes out. But then again, Fury is using his natural attributes. Something that AJ has neglected to do still to this day. And for some reason, nobody has shown so if you're not going to use your natural attributes and all that other stuff, you're going to need to throw in combinations. And he's going to need to stop thinking that he's a boxer and he needs to learn or get back to knowing how to fight. Sometimes you don't need to box the boxer. You need to fight the boxer. Like I said, if you go look at Dylan White, he fought Dylan White. He fought Dylan White. He wasn't boxing. He fought Dylan White. He needs to learn how to fight because at this point, it looked like he don't know how to fight no more. And he's not a boxer. So if you don't know how to fight, you definitely not going to outbox these guys like you want to. So what are you doing? Therefore, we get the results that we get today. Playing it safe. Tap, tap, jab, jab here. Let me go out on the limb and throw this right hand, but this right hand ain't really doing nothing and ain't really keeping him off me and nothing like that. He's going to have to fight all those fights, you know, very cautious like that, you know, unless he's going to use some natural attributes and throw them combinations. That's what I meant by that. Like, comment, subscribe. Bruce Vane, I'm out.